Good morning and welcome to the chat on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10-2. I'm David Lovejoy. Good morning. I'm Rhonda. And we're joined by Mr. Les Simpson. He's run for place four in on the Amarillo City Council. Of course, early voting starts today. So now's the time to have your voice heard. Mr. Simpson, welcome back to the show. Uh, it, it, we, we Talking to people over the past couple of days during this, I think it's unfair to try to tag the fault of this blood on one individual, one group, one one administration. Uh, th that's not what we need to do. But I, I want to ask you, how do you feel the Office of Emergency Management and our first responders, those crews, have responded? I think that's a more important question for you. How, do you think no. we did a good job being prepared for this? Yes, I, I think, you know, obviously this was a once in a generational event. I think it's been 40 years since we've seen this type of flooding and it was in the Paramount area before. Uh, I've been impressed of how uh, we mobilized. We were able to uh, to get people safe. I, I can't remember the, the 200, 300 people that were rescued and taken, the pets were rescued. Um, you're seeing all this uh, piping all over town now. We're expediting the, uh, uh, the relief of the water outside of the area. And so, um, yeah, I, th I think we've responded as, as we always do. I think people, the best of people come out when there's a response like this. And the great thing is we live in a community that's uh, very philanthropic. There are a lot of efforts to support uh, the people that have gone through this, but I don't know. It's been, maybe I was first on here in January, maybe for the first time. And yes. I have since day one of my campaign, I have been saying we have to focus on the fundamentals. And one of those is infrastructure. And lo and behold, we've seen that manifest itself in a major way. And uh, there's nothing we can do. This, this issue is not due to one term or one council. It's decades in the making. And there's nothing we can do about the past. Mm -hmm. What we have to look is be laser focused and have a full comprehensive report from the city on all of our infrastructure. Where is it? Where are our problem areas? What do we need to tackle first? And then we're going to have to figure out how to fund those things as much as possible without a property tax increase. That's the challenge that the citizens are giving to us. So I think, uh, you know, the, the timing of this, you never want to see it happen. But as far as looking at the next council, uh, I think it's given us a, a task to look at immediately and begin focusing on developing a long-term strategy for the city's infrastructure problem. So when you're looking at having to do a runoff, um, two parts to this question, um, how much will that, well, we just went through, affect the, the campaigns that, that you and everybody else will be running? And then and then a little bit of side note to that is when you're in a runoff, do you feel like there you have to change a little bit of your focus? I mean, maybe not like change your, you know, your platform or anything, but like maybe zone in on one or more things when it comes to a runoff? You know, the, the thing about runoffs is turnout is usually abysmal, which is why I'm glad you guys are bringing this up. And we need to to talk about people to talk about that. I can't tell you how many people came up and said, congratulations. <laughs> they thought I won the election. Other <laughs> candidates, Dean Crump, has said the same thing. So, yes, we do have a runoff uh, situation in this. I think as a candidate, you know, you, you stick to the things that you always talked about. Uh, I've been talking about infrastructure, so it, it really, you know, I really don't uh, change that. I think as a uh, as someone who campaigns, I really have just been reaching. I had nine thousand people that voted for me before. I just need those nine thousand people to come out. So I've been you know, communicating with them, uh, the, those that, that have supported me, those that voted for me before. Uh, those that voted in the first election, because most likely you're going to have people that it's it, it, it does happen, but it's far less common that say, uh, and someone can vote in the runoff if they yeah. not, did not vote in the first election. So you want to reinforce that. So the changing is not so much the messaging, but a little bit of strategy of how you're targeting just to remind those voters who showed enough to care up the first time to be sure to show up one more time. Uh, you have a uh, one, one of the things that have saved us over the past. 20 plus months of dealing with the pandemic and other issues is the strong pro-business attitude uh, that the former council had and also great work by Kevin Carter and his team at the Emerald Economic Development Corporation of recruiting and bringing in businesses. Uh, your former profession, that was a vital part of what you did each and every day was putting the city, the area on display. Uh, how do you feel and what would you go after and how are you going to approach 
and continue the economic success, the growth of Amarillo business here in our community if elected. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Amarillo Economic Development Corporation has done a great job of creating jobs and bringing industry in. I think we're adding some 3,500 jobs in, in the next several years, which is great. But I think where we're lacking is a business-friendly community for the small business. We have got to say yes to business in the community. It has become far too difficult for small businesses and developers to be able to do business with the city. It, it, it too, too much of a struggle to go through the permitting department, the building safety department. And I don't think that this is something that the city does on purpose. I just think it's a culture where too often the answer is immediately no, or we can't do that. Yeah. Or they tell someone something and, and then that, that per developer does it and then they add more things to it. Yeah. And, and we've just gotten too stringent. So we've got to say yes to business. And the best way to grow our tax base is by uh, growing inside the city limits. The growth is occurring outside of the city limits right now. About 17 percent growth rate in Randall County, uh, well less than half that in the city. And we're going to have some problems with our tax base if we do not address that and make it more friendly. So great job on the large businesses and attracting them. But small businesses are the backbone of our economy. We need to make it easier for them to be successful and, and be partners, not obstacles in doing that. So with that being said, um, we do want more small businesses. I mean, it's you just don't get the same attention um, mm -hmm. at a large company, not to say that those aren't very valuable, but um what is one thing that that we as a community could do to um encourage more small business to start up i mean you know of course we want to go shop local but is there anything else that we can do you know sometimes i think about uh, i was having this conversation last night somebody you know had an idea that i had had you know months and months before but i never acted on it Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. how, how can we foster more small business involvement yeah. and development? Yeah. And that's what I do. The company that I own now called the Entrepreneur Source, I work with clients that I've worked with locally across the country uh, to help people explore business ownership instead of working for someone else to take ownership of their career and be self-sufficient by starting their own business. So I've had a, a great experience with that. You know, I think obviously thinking about um, you know, using local businesses and one thing I deal with franchises, franchise companies. Uh, a lot of times people think of a franchise as Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, and, and those are, but there's a wide variety of industries, and I place people here locally. One thing you want to know is a franchise is a local business. Those are local business owners. So sometimes people think if you're not, uh, you know, if, if you're not totally locally owned, that you're not, a you no. Know, all these franchises are, and I place several people in, in businesses locally. But I think the best thing we can do, and I, but people support local business. I think they want to do that. But I just circle back around. The best thing we can do is to get government to get out of the way so so small businesses can be able to thrive and succeed. That's it. Uh, Les, we've got about 15, 20 seconds. Tell them why you're the man. Yeah, I think that I've served this community for 20 years in a variety of ways, professionally and personally, served on boards, been involved in uh, churches, uh, done my homework. You know, it's my job to, to watch local government in my career for, th for 30 years. Uh, I love this community. I'll, uh, I'll ask tough questions. I'll listen to all sides and I'll make tough decisions without being influenced by the loud voices. Early voting starts today. Les Simpson in place four. Thank you for your time, man. Have a great time and we'll see you soon. Great. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great day. Back at